What's up guys? I have a crazy, crazy thing. I'm not turning into an AI channel, by the way. Yeah, it's not happening, but this is really, really cool. So I've been looking into using Rhino 3D to design some lures because it has some really cool features that I think are gonna allow me to create some just really cool details. But we'll get to that later. While I was looking for Rhino tutorial videos, I saw somebody who took ChatGPT and made it write a Python script that runs inside of Rhino, specifically Grasshopper. Don't worry about that, we'll get to that later. And does stuff for them. And I thought, that's pretty cool. So I hopped on to ChatGPT to see if it can make me a worm, specifically a worm made of balls. The ball worm. So with ChatGPT, you just kind of describe what you want it to do, and the more information you give it, the better, right? Because it'll just like make stuff up and make mistakes. So the more constrained you get it, the better. So I said, hey, just write me a grasshopper component that does the following, right? We got a length of a line. We have a starting diameter of a sphere. We have an ending diameter of a sphere. And then we have like an overlap percentage, right? So how much they overlap. And it cranked out this code for me. And you know, it's like not exactly right. So you have to say like, dude, like I want to do inputs in Rhino and not just like in the script. And then it crashed on me because it got stuck in a loop. You know, this is, everybody says Jet, you know, AI is like amazing and it's gonna replace all these jobs and everything. I don't really think that's the case, at least not right now. You know, it's not gonna replace programmers anytime soon. I don't know how to program, by the way, in Python. Like I can read the code and kind of follow the logic, but like everything else is completely foreign to me. And that's kind of the point of this, right? It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just telling the AI to do it. So, you know, I just basically have to keep coaxing it down the right path of like, hey, maybe you should put in some debug messages. Maybe you should put in this. And, and you know, it just keeps pumping out script over script. I'm basically copying this um, over into this Rhino Python component, which here is the code over here, right? It's a little bit like, you know, that monkeys on the typewriter thing where, you know, it just keeps spitting out stuff and something will hopefully work at some point but eventually it gets there, right? So I add some error checking and here's the cool thing is like, um, whatever script you're writing in whatever Grasshopper, Rhino, Pure Python, whatever, if you make it add debug messages to print out what it's doing, you can paste those back into ChatGPT and it can kind of figure out what's going on if something is not working correctly. Much better than saying, you know, this doesn't work and letting it figure out why. Cause I tried to do this in a few other occasions and it just kept like making the same two mistakes, but it's like switching them off and never really getting going. So super frustrating. And so the first pattern that I had was a linear decay, which goes, you know, from the starting diameter size, let's say 12 millimeters, kind of in a straight line down to whatever I put for the ending size. And that was okay, but you know, I asked ChatGPT, like, is there a better way to do it? And it mentioned an exponential decay. So I thought, mm, that might be cool. Let's try that out. And so it just changed the algorithm kind of on the fly to an exponential decay, which is somewhere in here. <laughs> I don't know where that is. So it updated the code somewhere in there. I don't even know where that is. If you know, if you know Python, you might be able to find it in here. But it produces a kind of a, a hockey stick in reverse, if you will, right? It starts big, gets small quick, and then stays pretty small. But let's see how it does. So here's what it looks like once you implement it into Grasshopper, right? So I pasted that in there. And now what I have are basically sliders that I can change this thing to do, you know, whatever I want inside the context of building this lure. So I can easily adjust the length. These are all in millimeters, by the way. You can make it do whatever you want. The cool thing about Rhino, by the way, is, you know, you're just talking about units. So I can come into this project and change the unit to meters and or yards or feet or whatever and make an 80 foot long worm if I wanted to. But you know, you can get down to something kind of stubby like that, which is more along the lines of, let's put this into shape mode, more along the lines of a Ned, right? Bring that head size down just a little bit. And it's just doing this kind of on the fly. It's not fast, because I'm sure that code is not the proper way to do it in the sense of uh, the rhino world. Bring that tail size back up. And then boom, dude, you're good to go. And so all you do is kind of bake this out. So again, this isn't a rhino tutorial, but you know, you basically this is kind of uh, bake this out. And now, I have 
an actual solid object, then in my case, I'm gonna import into Fusion and make a mold out of. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so I just exported it out of Rhino as a step file, which is kind of the reason I'm using Rhino instead of like Blender or some other tool is because it will export out as a step file, which uh, Fusion loves. If you try to use Fusion with Blender, uh, Blender outputs mesh files and Fusion hates mesh files. I could probably do all of this in Rhino, but I don't really know how to use Rhino at all yet. So we're going back to my old standby Fusion. So I just add a fillet here. Then I build the mold. And by the way, I'll link a playlist at the end with all of this, all of these steps in Fusion. And boom, there we go. We've got a perfect mold. Let's see how it shoots. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. That is awesome, dude. <laughs> Not the uh, kind of size I was thinking about, but I got a fish on the drop shot, bro. That's cool. Is that a uh, sign of a good uh, finesse setup if you can catch fish that size with them? Kind of surprised he like bit the head though, dude. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Wow, okay, well, that's cool. Now I feel like um, I um, kinda know what I'm doing. At least enough to catch six inch bass. Oh, dang it. Did I break off? I broke off. See, that's what I was worried about, man, with that six pound, I had six pound test on there, but like, I don't know what I was doing. It's, it's a good reason. I'm gonna switch it up. I wanna try like a little bit different. Alright. This is certainly not as finessey as the first setup I had. I am tying straight on here. Looks like I'm about 90 feet deep on that drop shot too, so. And then we'll see. Let's see what we got, bro. Okay, we're back to the two drop shot hook. And I suck at tying drop shots, so we're <laughs> I went from like a six foot drop shot to a six inch drop shot. This is ridiculous. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> nice, bro. You know, we've got the same size fish all day. He's a pretty guy though. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys, I'm still way back in this creek. I think I'm almost to the uh, my exit, but there is a giant log blocking the way, so that's not gonna be fun. So I learned a ton today about the drop shot. I can't actually drop shot. The AI worm did really well, man. I don't think there's any giants back where I was fishing. And uh, you know, my understanding of finesse techniques is they're more about numbers than they are necessarily about the biggest fish. But um, yeah, dude, I was stoked. I mean, the one that broke off was easily 12 pounds. I mean, clearly, right? Obviously, 100%. But I mean, it was a steady pick back there in that little cove, dude, on the AI worm. The AI worm's got a ton of killer action, dude. It's like that whip tail is crazy. So here's what I'm gonna do. If you wanna try out a bag, I'm gonna give away ooh, five bags if I make it out of here alive. There is a link in the description to sign up for my mailing list. I thought that was an alligator. Ooh. There's a link in the description to sign up uh, to a giveaway, and I'll give away five people a bag of AI worms. It's pretty killer. I send an email like maybe once a decade or something. It's not like, it's not spammy. I'm drunk. So I hope you like the AI worm action. Killer, killer lure for you finesse guys. I'm becoming one of you. Take care, tight lines.